Hello, friends. Well, I'm going to try this again. I got a new webcam, and I'm going to try it without any kind of notes. You see if that helps explain it a little bit better. Maybe I am a little bit more articulate that way. I don't know. We'll give it a try. So let's just go with it. Here's a diagram illustration of the universe as an ellipse. It's actually, of course, a sphere. And the universe is actually extremely porous. It's mostly empty space. And by empty space, I do not mean the space between like a planet and a moon or between you and me. I'm talking about an outside dimension that's completely outside the universe. And the universe is expanding into this. And of course, the universe must be porous because every single particle of matter expands. And as it expands, it, it moves away. All the parts, all the celestial bodies that we're looking at move away from each other. Well, take a look at the, the inner sphere here and you'll see that it's more dense. And let's just assume that it has expanded one increment. And since the universe does expand at the rate of the speed of light, which is not so fast for the universe, we'll, we'll talk about that later. We'll prove that that's the case, as a matter of fact. So as the universe expands, it's less dense inside. And But guess what? The rulers, now this, we're not talking about the raisins in the bread dough that the physicists are trying to sell you on these days, OK? Uh, in this model, cosmic expansion, the raisins occupy space, and the raisins expand also. Understand that makes sense? Maybe I'm going a little too fast here. I tend to talk too fast, okay? But in the cosmic expansion model of the universe by Alan Foos, cosmic expansion is defined the way it really is. And when the universe expands, everything inside expands with it. You can see that. So here we have a, uh, a small ruler, okay? And the universe expands and it doubles. And then the ruler is 24 inches instead of 12. You see how that works? This is real cosmic expansion. And that really is what drives the universe. And it really is the cause of gravity. And it's not what physicists say it is. And I need for you to follow along very, very carefully with me so that this makes sense to you because we can prove this. We can prove everything I'm saying, the cause of gravity and the cosmic expansion model of the universe that is the only correct one. Uh, maybe the only one in history, I don't know. Uh, but I may be the only one alive that knows it yet, so get the word out there and pay attention to what I'm telling you. Okay, so the universe has expanded one increment, but everything is exactly the same inside with cosmic expansion. All right, no, this isn't my idea. Okay, I just didn't make this up. This isn't a theory. This is the real, this is what really happens with cosmic expansion. That will become more apparent as we, as we move along here. But for now, just um, go along with me and eventually see that I really know what I'm talking about. Okay, so notice that when the ruler gets longer, the clock has to run faster. See, length and clock speed are two sides of the same coin. And that's a fact that was proved, I suppose you could say best by the pound Repka experiment that was touted as one of those crucial experiments that verified Einstein's relativity. I don't know how all this happens, how it gets together. It doesn't, how they do this, lie to you like that or lie to themselves, I don't know, but it doesn't say, pound Repka says nothing about relativity or Einstein, but talking that way, obscures the real truth of the pound rip experiment. And without getting into a long discussion about that, just take my word for it. As you get closer to the surface of the Earth, the clock runs more slowly. That was one of the points of the experiment. 
because uh, this is a crucial experiment, not proving relativity, but provo proving the cosmic expansion model. So when you look at this diagram, you see a clock next to the ruler because that clock has to be running in sync with that ruler there. And it's actually not running any more slowly, is it? It's just going through a, a, um, a shorter circumference. So, but anyway, that's the way in which it actually is moving more slowly. And this is not a matter of experience, experience, excuse me, it's a matter of inference based on the um, experiment. And I explain this experiment in great detail in my book. And so that's a good place if you want to know more about that. But the way a meter is defined, it's a, a certain number of wavelengths of a given spectrum of light over, say, one second. That defines a meter. So in cosmic expansion, if if everything shrinks at once, that meter is not going to stay a meter unless the clock runs more slowly in proportion. This is actually what the pound replica experiment proves. And if you'll notice that in this kind of expansion, this is real space. This is bottom tier space. That this is what happens. You can take that ruler and you can walk with it next to the sun, or you can take it to the moon. It'll always measure the same. Your clock will always be in perfect sync with the ruler. That's even true if you fall into a black hole. So what are they talking about a singularity where distance should shrink away to nothing and everything is like a, a singularity, okay? Well, maybe from the way you're looking at it, it looks like a singularity, but from the standpoint of the ruler that falls into the black hole and you and your, and your clock, everything is exactly the same. Of course, you're probably gonna get crushed by gravity. But that isn't the case if the whole universe expands because density increases in proportion. As you can see from the shading of the diagram, density increases in proportion to the size. So not only are the rulers the same to us raisins who live inside the universe, but um, the force of gravity is the same. As a matter of fact, everything is the same. This is what Einstein's garbledy gook, you know, he had flashes of insight because I think he was actually looking for something. And these are his frames of reference or what they should have been if he really knew what he was doing. Because in every case where you're closer or farther away from a gravitational source, yardsticks and clocks speed up. And it, that's, that's an example of, of cosmic expansion, real cosmic expansion. So the universe really is expanding very rapidly. And you'll know that this is a fact. And it's expanding in a cosmic way, not the way that the big bangers are trying to tell you where everything is moving away because everything inside measures the same, exactly the same with cosmic expansion, real cosmic expansion. So as this universe is expanding, nothing inside changes, nothing. And I do mean nothing. You'll notice that as the ruler expands, the uh, clock speeds up and the wavelength of light increases. But you can't see that from inside the universe if the wavelength of light is increasing. You can only, well, it, the wavelengths stretch out the same way the ruler stretches out. So nothing changes with cosmic expansion. So how do we know the universe is expanding? Well, this is gonna be part two. And I'm going to work on that. I just got to have a cup of coffee here and take a break, okay? And be patient with me because this is really, truly the most important discovery in world history. I'm not, I'm not being hyperbolic here. I'm trying to 
get this idea across before I'm the last one on the planet that the truth dies with, because this is real science. It isn't the Big Bang relativity nonsense. Just forget about all that. Don't even think about it. Just follow along what I'm saying. Do you understand what I've said so far? Well, while I get my coffee, you go back over it, okay? That isn't going to take too much time. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's continue and see if we can, can get a little more clarity here and fix things a little bit better in our minds. You'll notice that as clock speeds and wavelengths and everything else increases, that at a given equidistant, equidistance from the Earth, we could call that a frame of reference. The speed of light is exactly the same. It's exactly the same color. And even if that frame of reference were expanded a million times, everything inside physically would be exactly the same. That's kind of a counterpart to Einstein's statement, isn't it? That every all the laws of physics are the same in a frame of reference. Well, forget about his frame of reference. These are the ref frames of reference that are important to us. And notice that if you were to aim a beam of light from the Earth and it were to travel outwards, and the meter stick is growing, of course, we know that. We can actually see the universe expanding. Why? Well, go back to the illustration with cosmic expansion. You cannot. You don't know that there's any expansion, but you can see that when you get farther away from a gravitational source, that wavelengths increase. It's called the redshift. The clock speed, of course, has to increase a little bit because the meter stick is a little bit longer. But there's a peculiar thing that happens if you shoot a beam of light away from the Earth. And I want you to pay very close attention to this, because given the model we're showing you here, there should be no change, because our model isn't quite complete. But there is, in fact, a change in light, not as you travel along with it. If you take your ruler and, your, and you ride the beam of light with your ruler and your yardstick, then everything will measure the same to you because you grow along with it, with the space as you leave. You can understand that. But if you're a distant observer, measuring the wavelength of that light, that beam of light, you can see that it shifts towards the red. See, the guy, the fixed observer who's a long distance away, he can see the expansion of space. He can see that the ruler gets a little bit longer. He can see that the light is shifting towards the red, that your clock is speeding a, a little bit. You don't experience those things. None of the laws of physics in that frame of reference change. Even, even if you expand with the universe 1400 million trillion times for 1400 trillion million years, there would be no change. But however, from a distance, we see this light changing. Well, what's going on? On um, my videos, I usually just keep talking and plowing along and people lose it. They can't, you know, that it's gone. They have it and then all of a sudden it's gone. I was the same way. It took me 50 years to get comfortable with this. I always, had bits and pieces of it in mind, and but I was very busy. And it took until 2020 for my vision to clear up, you know, to, oh, oh yeah, I'm onto it now. So with cosmic expansion, as we see with, that's what we see when we leave a gravitational source and things expand, that's cosmic expansion on a local level there are no changes. And this is critically important. But that light, what about this light that is seen to change? Well, um, that's interesting because it's a, a very, the change in, the shift in red isn't constant. Well, 
Um, I'm not so sure about that, but as the light speeds away and becomes red shifted, it accelerates. This is the this is the part that really doesn't make any sense. If it's receding away, we're going to get a Doppler shift. Okay, so that isn't any kind of a mystery. So maybe I was misleading you a little bit there. If two objects are moving apart from each other, there's a, a shift in the red and light between them, see, because the light has to move a little bit farther to catch up. That's called a Doppler shift. That's a red shift. And if things move together, there's a blue shift. So <clears throat> this is the well-known fact of physics, and you can use the Doppler equations to calculate the relative motion uh, between two bodies or two points in space. So, but the, the funny part here is, is that, is that the rate at which light leaves the Earth is precisely opposite the fall of the rate of falling bodies. Okay, no, remember Newton's G? Uh, 9.8 meters per second per second acceleration near the surface of the Earth. Yeah, you know about that, right? If you don't know that much, maybe you shouldn't even be here. So <clears throat> it's, a, it's a good test. But what about this light that's accelerating away? Why is it doing that? At exactly the same rate of falling bodies. So that where you're standing, if you drop the ball, it would accelerate at 9.8 meters per second per second, and you would be able to calculate a distance, and and you, you could actually measure the redshift. If you could measure it over that distance, you would get the, the velocity, the rate of recession between, uh, or the rate of falling bodies, or the rate of, of light, speed of light as it's leaving the earth. Oh, this is very important. It's a mirror image. So I just want you to just pretend for a minute. Just, just look at it this way. Don't try to think of it as that, that we're making anything out of it right at this point. But just imagine in your mind that the earth is actually expanding at 9.8 meters per second per second, and you're standing still. That was one of the analogies of Einstein's that he never really quite explained because he really didn't understand it. Well, wait a minute. If the Earth actually were expanding at 9.8 meters per second per second relative to its mass, and we were expanding because the cosmos was expanding, we wouldn't know the Earth was expanding. Ah, everything would be receding away equally, and we'll all be redshifted equally. If, it, if the redshift degree of redshift wasn't in proportion to an object's mass. I've been through this a thousand times, so it makes perfect sense to me. It probably doesn't to you, but you have to understand the way light travels and what the redshift really means if you're going to understand what the universe really looks like. Okay, so. You could, in your mind, just pretend that the Earth is expanding away at 9.8 meters per second per second and catching up to you and trapping you instead of you falling. Okay, that's very important. Now, there's another kind of gravitational redshift that we observe. Let's just, um, well, let me, let me pause for a second. I need to. I need to bring up another uh, illustration and think about that myself before we proceed. Thank you. Okay, maybe this illustration, this illustration will will help us a little bit. You can see the Earth way down there, way far away, and at equal distances away from the Earth, we have these frames of reference. We'll call them frames or boxes or whatever. And we know, of course, that we're if we're inside one of those frames and we move towards the Earth or away from the Earth or actually any direction whatsoever, that the clock rate and ruler length will change in just exactly the right way so that it 
everything remains the same. But if you're looking at it from, well, let's say we're looking at it from the outside fixed dimension, which is of infinite size and it's empty of mass, of course, because all the mass is in the universe and it's expanding into this empty dimension. So we could either be at equal distances many times over or moving away from the earth and the same thing would happen. Well, let's just assume that nothing is moving at this particular moment because we wouldn't know if it was moving, if the cosmos was expanding and everything was expanding, but we see something funny. Well, everything would be redshifted, wouldn't it? From the standpoint of the earth, but if everything was moving away from each other at exactly the same rates, even if everything was redshifted, it would still look the same. It would still be the same frequency. You see, there would be no way to tell. But something interesting is going on here because let's assume we have an object the size of Earth that's moving away from Earth over here on the right. And it's, you know, doom, 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 moving away. And of course, we would know that it was redshifted, but we do because over here on the left, we have another object that is, say, twice as big. Looks kind of like Saturn, doesn't it? But it, let's not say that. It's about twice as big and it's moving away twice as fast instead of boom, 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 boom. It's boom, 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 boom. It's really moving twice as fast and it has twice the mass. So this is how we know that there's a redshift. This is how the physicists, well, you can't say that this is Doppler redshift. You can't say that this object is moving away from us because it appears to stay at the same position. If everything is moving away at the same rate, well, how do I explain this? If this is moving away from planet Earth, either the planet on the left or the planet on the right, it will remain fixed in our frame of reference. Well, that was the last, that was the last uh, image, wasn't it? Okay. That as things move apart on the cosmic scale, they all look the same inside to us. So if the cosmos is expanding and everything is expanding at once, it doesn't look like it. Everything is fixed. So back in the days of Pound, Repka and Einstein, they looked at this fact and they said, well, these things aren't, these, these planets aren't moving away from us. They are redshifted as if they were, but they're not. We can see that, we can measure that. Suppose these are stars or planets within our galaxy, and we can all see that they're fixed in relation to us. We can measure the differences. Okay, well, um, but then why is it redshifted? You see, this is crucially important. It's one of those things that maybe I just blast through normally because you've got to be able to understand this. Go back to the other video, the cosmos expands or shrinks or whatever, everything inside is exactly the same. So if we're seeing a redshift in this object over here and it's not expanding, why? Okay, I, I just went over it a couple of times. I almost said it. It's expanding from the standpoint of outside the universe. So what does that tell you? It tells you that light is not traveling in the physical dimension. It's traveling outside the universe. Because actually every point in space or every particle of matter is a long distance from every other particle and the space between them is of no account. We already talked about that. We know that that's the case. We know about 
the expansion of space, you know, as, as rulers and, and clocks move to or from the earth. So if the cosmos is expanding at, and every particle of mass in it is expanding also in its own right, then, and, and the expansion is proportional to mass, then we know that this planet over here on the left, it's twice as big, it's twice the mass, it's going to be moving away from this twice as fast. But we won't see it, see? This is what, this is crucial. Einstein's gravitational redshift, well, there's no such thing as gravitational redshift. God, how real scientists wish there was never any such thing as Einstein. Because you can see from this diagram and what we know about cosmic expansion that these objects are fixed. The distance between us and everything else, not counting that everything is just moving around at random, but I mean, on average, okay, uh, there's no effect. Uh, everything is essentially fixed. But we see this redshift. It's not gravitational redshift. Well, it's kind of gravitational redshift, but it's, it, that doesn't explain what it is. It's Doppler redshift, that light is measuring outside the universe. See, because light has no mass, so it isn't, it isn't affected by yardsticks and clocks. It sees the real distance on the cosmic level. Am I getting it? Am I getting it now? This is so important. This is how we know the universe is expanding in a cosmic way, not the way the big bangers are talking about it. No, no, no. no. And that. Oh, let's go back to that redshift from Earth. It's light is accelerating away. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It, from the outside, everything is expanding and the earth is expanding faster than you, so it's catching up to you and that's what's really happening. Yeah. Everything is expanding, but it appears to be fixed. Okay, this is just a little geom geometry problem. So in this little illustration here, though, we see that, well, we see that as we travel away from Earth, our yardsticks grow, we know that, you know, and the clock is running faster. Uh, and, um, and now we also know that objects with greater mass are redshift because they are actually moving away, but they appear fixed to us. They're moving away on the cosmic level, but they're fixed in relation to us in our dimension. But we see that rate of movement reflected back to us, transmitted back to us by the object. This is my color. This is how red I am. And this is how you can calculate how fast we're moving away from you. And if that fact is true that I mentioned earlier that the rate of redshift is exactly equivalent to the force of gravity in reverse, then you'll know the degree of redshift between this point in space, this object, or this other object, as far as that goes. We'll know that the space, that the distance between any two points, that the difference in rates of expansion between those two points is the gravitational potential between those two points. The gravitational potential isn't just for planet Earth, it's for everywhere. It's for the moon, it's for Jupiter. Jupiter, things are going to be traveling really, really fast because it's got a much greater mass and it's going to be more redshifted if we can me measure the difference between the redshift of our moon and, say, Jupiter. Jupiter would be dramatically redshifted because it has so much mass. This is the light that's leaving, but as it leaves, it begins to accelerate in exactly the opposite way that bodies would be falling. Because in the cosmic level, objects that are falling represent objects that are moving apart. Well, we haven't given a reason for that, though, have we? 
we would expect is in this diagram, everything to be shaded blue because everything is moving apart at a constant uniform rate of speed. See, there's no gravity in this model. It doesn't work. You see, it, light would not, light, light would just, if it's, if light is redshifted, it'll just be redshifted at a constant rate. It isn't going to uh, accelerate the way a falling body does. It's not going to accelerate away, but that, that's what light does. So there's a very, very strong connection between, between uh, the speed of light and, and uh, the force of gravity, which you know, Einstein said that was his big thing for solving unified field theory. The biggest thing, you know, is to resolve the connection, identify the connection between electromagnetic waves and gravity. Well, we just did that, didn't we? Well, well not exactly. We haven't explained gravity. I mean, we've explained the redshift and the cosmic expansion, but we still haven't explained gravity. This really isn't all that hard. I really think that a lot of you out there would have followed me this far and you know that I'm telling the truth. This is, these are facts. Knowing facts of physics, these aren't my ideas. They're not the notions of a crackpot who wants to beat Einstein or look smart. We've established that bodies that, that in both cosmic expansion, everything inside the universe remains in the same equidistant, nothing changes. Force of gravity, the chemical reactions, the law of entropy, all the laws of physics are exactly the same. But let's supposing that everything is, that the expansion on the cosmic level is actually accelerating. All right. Let's be careful here, this isn't my idea. Remember Newton's third law of gravitation? Third law of gravity? Gee, I mean, you know, Einstein did a pretty good number on poor old Newton, but Newton was right. <laughs> Everybody really knows it. You know, if you jump off a diving board, the force with which you go up is equal to the force pushing down on the diving board. We all know about Newton's third law. Every action, creates an equal and opposite reaction. So if the force of, or if the rate of expansion becomes a force, a force of expansion, if it's actually a force, if there's a force behind it, it accelerates because that's what force is. It's mass times acceleration. Are you getting it now? On the cosmic level, everything is expanding away from everything else in proportion to its mass, at a, at, a, at a rate proportion to its mass. And that movement is accelerating. That's a force. It's an outward force. It's a push outwards. The universe is accelerating out into this infinite void or this unknown dimension that maybe is filled with energy, it probably is. We don't know, we don't know that. But matter, the universe is just expanding into it. Each one of us expanding into it. Everything is expanding into it at a rate proportion to the mass in that region. And the force of that expansion outwards according to Newton's third law, creates an equal and opposite reaction. And that's what we experience as gravity. And this is a proof. Everything that I've gone through, every step we've taken so far, is a known fact of physics. We've interpreted it just a little bit differently than Albert Einstein and the Big Bangers because we interpreted it correctly. And you can see that an empirical proof is where everything adds up. And in this situation, everything adds up. 
And the more you think about it and the more you study it, if you've gotten this far, you can finish it. I don't, you know, we don't have to. Well, let's let's take one break here. I want to go to this next illustration and, and talk about that um, and collect myself a little bit too. Well, I hope by now that you followed along and you realize that the cosmic expansion model is correct. That we can account for the redshift and and the force of gravity just by thinking in terms of cosmic expansion instead of raisins and bread dough. So in this illustration, we've got what it really looks like from outside the universe to a fixed, extremely remote observers, very remote, as an object leaves the Earth, or as actually, let's assume this is a ray of light, a beam of light. It shifts from the blue towards the red, and it's accelerating as it leaves. Of course, that the force of acceleration is diminishing with the square of the distance. We know that, so that's going to taper off. But that's not, not exactly the point at this, at this point. We see that this accelerating expansion of space that is invisible in the physical dimension, but which is actually measurable due to the redshift of light in objects that are fixed in relation to us. We can correctly infer, and that constitutes, constitutes a proof because everything fits, it accounts for all the evidence. I suppose that's an empirical proof, whatever it is, there isn't a better proof. Okay, so as space is expanding, as this ray of light is, is leaving because it's being carried along, mind you, it's being carried along by the expansion. Nothing is pushing the light. You see, it's just that as space is expanding away from the Earth, which you can't see, I lost track of my thought there. OK. But as it's traveling away, which you can't see, and it's accelerating away with a force of whatever, 9.8 meters per second per second or whatever, is doing a pushback. It's got, it's pushing everything back. Every particle of matter is pushing against each other. That's gravity, you see. Not to delusions of a crackpot. I'm telling you, like it is, you can see it. You can reason through it for yourself. Something else you, oh, I'm just going to interject this. I guess maybe I shouldn't at this point, but I'll save it for later. But people are always talking about going backwards in time and you know, wormholes and all this, that, and the other. But take a look at this clock. Okay. This clock doesn't move unless that ruler expands. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, the, you know, my watch now, is, it's on my, you know, it's not moving, and yet it's, it's running. So what are you talking about? Well, you forget the entire universe is expanding at the speed of light. Well, wait a minute. How do we know the universe expands at the speed of light? Wait a minute. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. Remember that this redshift we observed, is equivalent to expansion. It's a recession. It's the rate of recession, or you could say rate of expansion between any two points, and it's proportional to mass. So certainly the universe as a whole is expanding in proportion to its mass. That's the speed of light. We'll go back to this example of the, the redshift here. We know we have proved up to this point that this object has twice the mass, so it's moving away from us at twice the rate. And it's accelerating. But of course, we can't see that either. And because it's accelerating and twice the mass, 
the gravitational potential is twice as much between, say, us and planet Earth here and, and the same distance away here from this other celestial object. So, am I making sense so far? Am I going slow enough this time? Is it beginning to make sense? Just following through the logical steps here, based on facts of physical experiments that were claimed to validate Einstein, did nothing of the kind. They actually tell us about this. So the universe expand, is expanding at the speed of light. And if it weren't, there wouldn't be any motion. There wouldn't be any gravity. Actually, nothing would move. So my point being about your watch, OK, if nothing was expanding, nothing would move. But when things expand, the hands on that clock begin to move because, or if they were already moving, they're going to expand. The clock is going to be moving faster in proportion to the size of that ruler. So the rate of expansion is equal to the speed of your watch. There's no time. Time and distance. Time is actually a function of expansion of the universe. OK. That's a little bit deeper than, than I wanted to focus on quite this soon. I wanted to make sure you understand just how gravity works and how the, the sizes, of distances of rulers and rates of clocks, how they change with expansion and what kind of effects we observe. And with uniform expansion of the universe on a cosmic level, not the kind of expansion the physicists are talking about, but our true cosmic expansion where everything moves apart. If it moves apart a cosmic way at a rate of well, at a accelerating rate equal to the rate of bodies that fall back in the other direction because of the force of gravity that's exerting on particles of mass. But expanding outwards, it's just the force of the overall expansion of the universe. But that launching pad actually pushes all particles of matter together at a rate proportional to their mass. And that is what we experience as gravity. All right. Well, I can only say this so many times in so many ways. And I'm getting very few views of my videos, even though this really is the most profound, right, important, profound, whatever, should be the most earth-shaking discovery in world history the cause of gravity and the right structure of the cosmos. And hopefully, if you follow me along here, you can see that, that I'm right. Of course, we haven't discussed every issue just yet. But let's talk about this fixed distance. OK. It's kind of interesting, because if the cosmos is expanding at a whole at, a whole, at an accelerating rate, shouldn't we see some uh, a drift at some rate of in the red in the red shift of bodies that we're looking at because they are in fact accelerating. Well, we wouldn't see that for several reasons. One of them is, is that the effect is so small. Well, that actually is the reason, but there are different reasons for that. The rate of uh, expansion due to mass in a certain area is going to taper off very quickly. So that's the least of, you know, the expansion that we're, we're seeing. And we're only measuring, we're only seeing from point to point, expansion from that point to that point. But if the universe as a whole and everything is expanding together, but if the universe as a whole is expanding too, we should see a tiny 
extra drift, shouldn't we? But we don't. So, and you know, well, one other reason I didn't didn't even mention this is that how fast is the universe really expanding? We know it's expanding at the rate of the speed of light as we would measure it. But remember, dimensions, including velocities within the physical universe, the one that we're inside the sphere, they're fixed, including the speed of light. But they're not fixed if you're watching things happen from outside the universe. They're not fixed in relation to the fixed external infinite dimension that it's expanding into. In other words, on the outside, the universe has to be expanding at an incremental acceleration of the speed of light. Okay, if you think this through, you can see how that has to be because that's actually what's happening on Earth if you think about it. It has to be accelerating at the speed of light, but it doesn't just reset itself. It has to continue to accelerate at little c forever and ever and ever. So it's really expanding at the rate of c, accelerating at the rate of little c. It's growing every second at the rate of little c, which we think is a really big number. The whole universe has been doing this for billions of years. How big is it really? So the incremental, the difference, the differential rate between this enormous and calculable humongous rate of expansion for the universe as a whole that we don't see and we can't see is it's almost nothing. The relative rate of expansion from, from point to point due to the increase in big C is so trivial that we wouldn't see it. But it would be reassuring if, if we could. <laughs> Here come our physicists, though, with just what we need. On the intergalactic level, what these idiots have done is they've taken the redshift, which is fixed in our galaxy or whatever, and they, they look at that, and they've correlated it. This was one of Hubble's exercises, if you know anything about that. We're talking about the Hubble constant and all that stuff. Okay. They've correlated this incremental increase of little c at, with distances based on the brightness of distant galaxies. Okay, over that period of time, of course, these incremental differences will add up and they will increase progressively, you know, as we go back in time. That's what we're seeing. You see, but they have correlated that with actual physical distances on our level, even though we know that light is traveling in the external. universe, not our fixed dimensions, but it's seeing the universe as it really is. And so it has, it's traveling at it. The difference between then and now as you know, these incremental differences have added up to, you know, a significant amount and they'll increase with time and distance. But the physicists, bless their hearts, they believe because based on these standard candles that they're looking at the distances between galaxies. They don't see this shift for celestial bodies within the universe, or excuse me, within the solar system or within the galaxy. So that's gravitational redshift. But this now, this is recessional velocity by golly. Not realizing that they're actually measuring the different rates of expansion from billions of years ago until today. So this is that little incremental difference that we were looking for. The physicists have proved it for us. They've just interpreted it wrongly as they always do. So I'm going to take another break. Thank you. Well, we shouldn't talk too much longer. I just hope at this point that you followed me well. And if you haven't, go back and, and do it again.
because this does constitute constitute a, a real proof of cause of gravity and the nature of the universe. This model of the universe is correct. It's the only one. Okay, so I want you to understand it because the world should know about it. And if you understand it and you understand how important it is, hopefully you can tell somebody else and it doesn't, you know, I'm not the only one who dies with the secrets of the universe. So how long has it been doing this? The universe accelerating at an incre incremental rate of a little c and the overall size of the universe becoming too immense to even possibly imagine. Well, if there was gravity, that was always the case because it's this accelerating rate of expansion that gives us gravity and enables the hands on our watch to turn. So that's a long time. So, but inside our physical dimensions are exactly the same as they began in the beginning of time. And that's the way they're gonna end. Well, when would it end? If everything is the same inside and everything expands just to enforce the force of gravity, then it never ends. It never could end. There's no reason why it should end. You see, the stars aren't really receding away the way they tell you. There was no big bang that they're telling. <laughs> Einstein was almost never right. They're not telling you that either. But that's what I'm telling you and I'm showing you. Step by step, you can walk through and you can see perfectly well that this is the way, only way it could be. This, these are the only inferences that you could draw. So I suppose if we're talking about the age of the universe, I suppose if we were to extrapolate backwards, second by second for billions of years, we could get to a size, well, it wouldn't make any difference inside, would it? You could shrink forever and ever, just like you can grow forever and ever, because that's the way cosmic space is. It has no effect on conditions inside a frame of reference, as long as everything expands or contracts along with it. And that's a fact, and you know that. So I suppose maybe if you're going back far enough, the rate of expansion of the universe could become zero. Poof, you know, uh, some umpteen billion years ago. And I'm sure that James Webb, if it does anything at all, didn't confirm Einstein over and over and over and over and the relativity over and over and over and tell us more and more about the Big Bang than there ever was. Maybe it'll tell us that the universe is a whole lot bigger than we thought and a whole lot older than we thought. And I don't know what they're going to do with the CMB. It obviously means something, but it sure doesn't say anything about a Big Bang because the Big Bang couldn't have been. The origins of the universe were when it was smaller and growing, you know, as long as there was gravity. So now you know the truth. And what else do we need to talk about? Um, well, my gut instinct is, is that the universe actually had no beginning. But I don't know exactly how to explain that because obviously there, you know, you would think it eventually get to the point where I, I, I'm not really missing. I'm missing something maybe here. Uh, do we have a really good mathematician who can help me out? Because that's what we need. We need good mathematicians to verify, validate what I'm telling you is true and do something about overturning this horrendous fraud that governments have been perpetrating on us with this Einstein Big Bang stuff. Do I dare say it? Well, you know what I mean. So that ought to about do it for today. And I hope that doing it this way, the video this way, will actually work out better and I'll be better understood. So thank you very much. Signing off, this is Al.